My God, you want to test my faith. You want to see how noble I will be on your behalf. You want to see how well I will face hardships. You want to see my love for you. I melt like a candle. The warp and woof of my being are knotted by your love. Behold, how I burn and enjoy it. You want to test my faith. Oh my God, my glorious Lord. I live only for such a moment. I've lived my life in preparation for such a time, the time of martyrdom. Dr. Mustafa Chamran was born on October 2nd, 1932 in the holy city of Qom. He was martyred on June 21st, 1981. When Mustafa was two years old, his family moved to Tehran, where he was brought up and received his first degree, a bachelor's of science. At age 15, he began his involvement with Islamic associations. After graduating with a degree in electrical and mechanical engineering, from the University of Tehran, he received a government scholarship for further studies in the United States. He earned his PhD in electronics and plasma physics from the University of California at Berkeley. One of the most uh, remarkable things about uh, Dr. Mustafa Chamran was the fact that he was multifaceted. Actually, our religion tells us of people like that, such as Imam Ali, peace be upon him. Such traits are very natural for a great person. Imam Ali valiantly faced the brave men of Mecca, yet could show kindness and tenderness towards an orphan. And numbers of Imam Ali's followers are the same way. Of course, Dr. Chamran saw himself as less than Imam Ali, but he, like the first Imam, had a multifaceted character. Uh, he was a great scientist in physics, um, electronics, and plasma physics. When he wrote his thesis in physics, there were very few working in that field. Dr. Chamran was involved in guerrilla activities in the liberation wars against Israel and the Phalangists. In the wake of the victory of the Islamic Revolution of Iran, Dr. Chamran returned after 23 years of absence to his country to place all of his revolutionary and scientific experience at the revolution's disposal. During the Iraq-imposed war on Iran, he took personal command of particularly hazardous military operations. He was finally martyred in the rural settlement of Dehlaviyeh in Khuzestan, exactly nine months after the beginning of the Iraqi aggression. Uh, besides his career in science, he was a very talented politician and a capable manager. He succeeded in whatever project he undertook. And he was also an artist. He was a sensitive painter, a photographer, and calligrapher, as well as a writer and lecturer. On the other side, he was a great commander in battle. No other commander exhibited such great bravery, resistance, or self-denial. And on top of all of that, he was a virtuous sage with a sensitive poetic personality. 
He was also pious and God-fearing. His mysticism, scientific brilliance, bravery, artistic talents and political acumen made him altogether extraordinary. Such men are seldom found. And here is what he wrote about himself while he was in Lebanon. I'll read part of it to you. It is titled, Tears and Iron. This is me. What a strange concoction. A delicate nature. A sensitive heart. Teary eyes. One whose warp and woof of existence are knotted. With love and kindness. But with more iron than any iron. Heart as granite stronger than a mountain. A strange thing, how tears and iron have thus blended. I can't even disturb an ant. I don't want to kill the enemy who seeks my life. My heart trembles for the shaking of a leaf. I melt at the tears of orphans. The twinkle of a star steals my heart. The morning breeze takes my soul to heaven. Oh my God, how such delicacy is mixed with such hardness in me. I myself am wonderstruck. We give our gratitude to both his name and memory on the anniversary of his martyrdom and ask God to help us follow such people as our examples. و بی نظیر انسانیت رو به خوبی دنبال کنیم